What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and the player ratings and potential of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those who are out there who may be new to the game I just need a little bit of advice or for those of you out there who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. So yes, in today's episode of the Sign For Guys, we're going to return to England and the Premier League and take a look at Brighton and Hove Albion. That's right, Graham Potter's side who this season have done okay and in the game, as you can see, are a four-star team starting off with a budget of around with wage budget alteration, 35 to £37 million. Pounds. Of course, in this year's FIFA career mode, you're always given a really generous wage budget which doesn't need to be as high as the game defaults it to. So it's around 35 to 37 million pounds after nudging it up. And as you can see, their objectives in the first season are to finish in mid-table and reach the round of 16 of the FA Cup. So it's a decent team. There's some decent young talent to the team as well. You've uh, got the likes of uh, Ben White currently out on loan at Leeds United, uh, Jason Malombi, uh, and my team Millwall. Uh, you've got uh, Aaron Connolly, of course, the very talented young Irish striker as well. So there's a few really good young talents here at the Brighton Hove Albion team. But if you are to make the next step with Brighton, and turn them from a mid-table to bottom half of the table team to a top half team to a Europa League team, then you're going to need to improve the squad right from the get-go. Because again, it's decent. It's all right. It's quite a thick squad as well. But what you'll notice is there's a lot of players out on loan right now, but it does lack some really good players in the first 11 right now. But as I alluded to there, though, it is a thick squad. You've got 45 players in total. But again, loads of players are currently out on loan right now as I run you through the squad. And there are a few aging players as well. Most of the players, as you'll notice, are in their mid-20s, but you still got players like Kyle, 31, uh, Shalotto, 30, Dale Stevens, 30, Glenn Murray, of course, a senior here at 35 years old. He'll probably retire in the first season for you, otherwise you wouldn't be against cashing in on the first season. And they've got five players, I think it is, with the deals that come at the end of the year. Personally speaking, I wouldn't give new contracts to any of these players, apart from the young French right-back from Marek Yappi, uh, who has, I believe, 77 potential, which isn't too bad, and are just, are just 18 years old as well he's not going to cost you much money to extend his contract everyone else though I look to sell in the very first season or release on a free transfer but as you notice here there are loads of players that are currently out on loan from Brighton and Hove Albion as I always mention in these episodes here one of the best ways to improve a team in terms of squad depth or perhaps even first team quality or look to get more money in your budget is by recalling these players that have got as I call as I say sorry uh, resale value you got the likes of Florian Andone Anthony Knockart of course Ben White who we mentioned a moment ago there on loan at Ellen Road. Uh, Leon Belogan at Wigan Athletic. Percy Tower at Club Bruges as well. There's quite a few players here that you don't need to keep loaned out right now because really, whilst they're out on loan, unless you've got the young lads like Christian Walton or uh, Ben White, they're not really doing anything for you whilst you're out on loan right now. You might as well recall them from their loan spells, bring them back to the Amex and again, either sell them or put them in your first team. In the, in the case of uh, Jurgen Locadia and Walton, they're good enough to go on our bench but other players like Percy Tao and Florian Andone and Anthony Nocker, they're going to go on the transfer list and as you can see we can recall them for a fraction of the fee that we'll be getting for when we sell them. It's just a really easy way to get more money uh, in career mode or again, added squad depth or first team quality. So you saw the transfer list there, quite a lot of players in their late 20s to early 30s and players who quite frankly lack the ability to be good players for this Brighton team for the present and the future as well. And again, you see the likes of Florian Done here after we agreed to deal with Shalotto to sell him to Nantes. Um, you know, I think the fee was 10 million as we see there, 10 million pounds to Ajax, it cost us less than a million to recall him back to the Amex Stadium. We're going to re are we going to sell him on for £10 million? It just makes perfect sense to recall those players that have got resale value and sell them on for a big profit. But to ask for new signings with the Brighton team, we saw it a moment ago there. It's a four-star team. Again, it's pretty decent, but really the biggest area of concern with Brighton is the lack of quality in the first 11. If you want to take the next step with Brighton, break into the top half of the table and push for a European place, you're going to need better players in the first 11. You've got a fixed squad, but you don't need squad depth in the first season at the Amex because Brighton aren't playing in Europe in the first season so therefore you've only got two competitions worth worrying about as the boy never care about the Carabao Cup and 
therefore you don't need a fixed squad, you just need a better one. I personally recommend improving the fullbacks, both left back and right back, and my number one target for the left back role would be this guy who, as everyone knows, is one of my favourite left backs in the world right now, not just in the game, but in real life. I'm so big on this kid. Uh, ben Chilwell from Leicester City, you can get him for around 21 to 22 million pounds. I was quite lucky after the sell on clause was negotiated, we managed to get him for 20.7 million pounds, but he's only 22 years old and it'd be perfect to come in and start left back for you. You've only got one official left back here, that's Bernardo, uh, otherwise Dan Byrne is starting in the left back role and you want someone that's quicker, got much better stats both defensively but also in going forward as well. High, high work rates, 88 stamina and again just 22 years old, Chilwell starts off 81 rated so already he's going to be one of your very best players in the very first season and will be your highest rated player in the first season and at just 22 years old he's uh, 7 ratings higher than Bernardo despite being 2 years younger and has 85 potential as well definitely try and get Chilwell as your first choice left back for Brighton Hove Albion he's an amazing young player and he'd be perfect for Brighton's system but uh, following that, as for new signings, I said a moment ago there, uh, left back and right back is where I look to prioritise in the first season as those are, based on rating alone, the weakest areas in the Brighton team. And whilst you've got Martin Montoya here, who's a decent Spanish right back, he's 28 years old and only 76 rated, so he's not going to get any better and in a year or two's time is going to start declining. I'd recommend a new right back for the first 11 and my recommendation will be this guy right here, Hector Bayerin of Arsenal. He's 24 years old, but don't be put off by that. It's still very, very young. Four ratings lower than Martin Montoya, despite being three ratings higher, and at 24 as well, he still grows five ratings to 84 overall as well. You can get him for around 15 to 16 mil. We paid 15 point for, uh, three quarter mil uh, for the guy, and again, at 24 years old, he might not be the youngest player, but he's still got room to grow with 84 potential. And again, starting off 79 overall means he's better than Montoya, and he's four years younger as well. So great player to have in the Brighton team. You know all about Hector Bellerin. You know his best asset. It is the pace, of course. Uh, be wary of those high-low work rates. That low defensive work rate can cause you some problems uh, on a full-back, but I believe you can still set the instructions for players to stay back and uh, give more effort on the defensive uh, side as well, so it's not too big of an issue. But yeah, Hector Bayerin, great player. And uh, again, for around 15 to 16 mil, it's a really good deal for a player that's, again, younger than Montoya, better, and still grows to 84 overall at his peak as well. But after the signings of our two new full-backs, Ben Shewell from Leicester and Hector Bayerin from Arsenal. We sold Anthony Knockout here to Frankfurt for 6.75 mil. And again, this is why you recall these sort of players like Belogan uh, from Wigan as well. Because quite frankly, right now, these guys, you know, they're either in their 30s or their mid to late 20s. They don't need game time. They don't need development. So you might as well just bring them back and sell them on for a profit. You're recalling them for a, a very cheap fee of around half a million, if that in some cases. And you're selling them for several million pounds and making a big profit. Percy Tower another player here we sent him to Vicarage Road for him. it was seven million pounds as he goes to the Hornets and again right now 25 years old 73 rated striker He's not doing anything for you whilst he's out on loan at Club Bruges. But if you recall him and sell him, you're getting a lot of money in your bank account and it's far better for you as a club. So we sold him for 6.75 mil actually, but either way, it's still a much better deal than just having him out on loan right now. Whilst the club might pay his wages, it's a bit of a waste of time. So uh, we sold Belogan, we sold Percy Tau, we sold Anthony Knockart as well. And he also about here, had a bit here for uh, Dan Byrne as well. A uh, decent player, 74 rated defender, can play centre back and again left back as well. He's very, very tall, this guy. He's Six foot six, he's a giant, but I would still recommend selling the guy because you've got enough depth in the CB area with Shane Duffy and Lewis Dunk, the captain, Webster, and of course Ben White out on loan at Leeds right now, who you can recall for a cheap fee. We sold him to Fiorentina for £6.5 million, and I'll definitely recommend doing that. But we said it here for uh, Martin Montoya, it's quite an interesting one. Uh, Ajax put a bit in for our Spanish right back, and of course, after the signing of Hector Bayerin for 15.75 mil from Arsenal, we got a better and younger right back to replace Martin Montoya as our new for, uh, as our new first choice. And I would recommend selling Montoya as well. You can get around seven to eight million pounds for the guy. We got the eight mil uh, from Ajax here as we sell him to the Netherlands because you can get a player for around the same amount of uh, money 
who's around the same rating but far younger as well and uh, I'll show you who I'd recommend uh, signing to replace Martin Montoya as the backup right back for Hector Bellerin in the first season. Again, Montoya is a backup, 28 years old, 76 rated. It's not a bad player to have but there are younger options that have got far more potential for the future that you'll be paying a very similar fee for that will be much, much better for the future. So after the sale of Montoya, after, well, quite a few sales in succession plus season ticket money as well, we now add our budget up to around 30 to 32 million pounds and I'd recommend two more signings for Brighton if you've got the cash and these are two really good young English players. First and foremost Harvey Barnes of Leicester City. Big fan of this young man. Only 21 years old. He's got a four star weak foot and whilst it doesn't suggest that he can play on the right hand side in the game he definitely can. He can play left wing, he can play right wing even though it's not a listed position and with Harvey Barnes as well he can play him through the middle if you'd prefer to do so or personally speaking with the pace he's got, I think it'd be better suited to the right wing or as a left wing inside forward. But you can get him for around 17 to 19 mil, depending on whether you want to include a sell-on clause or not. We did, so we could soften the transfer fee. And it'll cost you around 50 grand a week, so not too much. I'm getting just 21 years old. He's already 78 rated, and Harvey Barnes has 85 potential as well. So once you sign Ben Chilwell, bring along one of his mates. And uh, I, I love this guy's stats. 82 acceleration, 81 sprint speed, 81 dribbling, 80 agility. He's got great ball control, uh, great balance as well with those high medium work rates and a four star weak foot too. Technically he's really good. He's very quick and he goes 77 crossing as well. Don't be put off playing him on the right hand side even though it's not listed in his positions. He's far more suited to that role than Pascal Gruss is due to the lack of pace that Gruss has. He'd be better suited to play from the middle of the park uh, in FIFA but uh, yeah Barnes has the pace. He's got the technical ability. He can play on the left hand side, the right hand side or through the middle of the park and again for around 17 to 19 mil. He's a great player to have in this Brighton team. At just 21 years old, he's only going to get better with 85 potential. So Barnes is one of my final two signings with Brighton and the fourth and final one was this guy right here. Mentioned a moment ago, I was selling Martin Montoya. You want a backup right back. You can get someone for around the same fee you sold Martin for and he's going to be uh, far younger with more potential for the future. And the number one target, well, it's a pretty obvious one. Yep, that's right. Reese James of Chelsea. You can get for around 10 to 11 million pounds. Chelsea will never hold you to ransom over the young right back because of the fact they've got more depth in that position and uh, better players in terms of the rating right now. We got him on 10.8 million pound deal, uh, five year contract, 40 grand a week. And whilst he is right now four ratings lower than Hector Bellerin, he's only 19 years old, so nine years younger than the Spaniard Martin Montoya, and he's only one rating lower than Montoya, so you're not taking much of a hit in the starting overall. But Reese James is one of the highest potential right backs in the game game with 87 potential. He's an amazing player to have. Physically he's a really, really solid player. You'll notice he can play, also play holding midfield as well, so it's good for the versatility. He's quick, he's strong. Technically he's fantastic defensively as well, with three star, three star, six foot two, so possibly you could drift him in to play centre back if you wanted to. Personally, I would play him either right back or holding mid. Totally up to you, but again, he's a great young talent, only 19 years old, and again he'll only cost you a little bit more than what you got for Martin Montoya, but he's far younger, nine years younger, only one rating lower to begin with, and again has 87 potential as well. So those are the four new signings I'd recommend with Brighton over Albion, and again, like we said earlier there, we don't need to worry about squad depth with Brighton, they're not in Europe in the first season, there's not going to be tons of games to squeeze into the calendar, you don't need a really thick squad, all you need to do is improve the first 11. We've done that with the signings of Barnes, Bayerine, and Chilwell as well. And of course, we've got Reese James for the bench as well for a good little versatile player and a backup right back for our new Spaniard, Hector Bellerin. Um, I also recalled Ben White as well because we had a little bit of cash left over. Totally up to you whether you want to do that. Uh, but again, it will add your uh, to, uh, to your centre-back squad depth. And again, at 21 years old, just 75 rated. Huge fan of Ben White. He might play for Leeds, but even as a Millwall fan, I've got to admit, he's a great young defender. But uh, yeah, I would recommend recalling him if you've got a little bit of cash still remaining. So in the end, we sold nine players for 40. £56 million, pounds, most of which in their mid to late 20s or early 30s, and signed four players for a whopping £65 million. Pounds. But all four players, either in their early 20s or in the case of Reese James, just 19 years old. It was a net loss of £19 million, but the four players coming in all improving the first 11 and the bench as well, and making our team look stronger for the first season and for the future as well. The question is, could these new signings get us into mid-table and reach our last 16 in the FA Cup as well, like the board expects us to? Well, as you can see... 
In the Premier League, we did indeed finish in mid-table to keep the board happy and really with this Brighton team, that's a very low expectation. I mean, personally speaking, there's, there's a lot of quality teams in the Premier League, I mean, obviously, but I'd say really you should be aiming for like an 8th to 10th place finish, possibly 10th to 12th, which is where we finished uh, 11th place in the first season. Uh, did score a surprisingly low amount of goals, just 37 in 38 games, Well, that was really poor, but either way, we still finished in 11th place, well clear of the drop zone, in fact, 21 points clear of Bournemouth in 18th place. We were far, far, far clear of uh, the dreaded drop zone in the first season. And again, so it's a really good Brighton team. Four-star team, no European competition, so you don't need a fixed squad either. Um, in the Carabao Cup, as you can see, the board don't care about the Carabao Cup uh, in the game ever, in any season you're doing with whatever club you're using, but I thought I'd show you where we got to. Uh, we were knocked out in the third round by rivals Crystal Palace on penalties uh, at the Amex. And as for the FA Cup, we were asked to reach the round of 16 by the board. And as you can see well as I always say I don't try and sweep anything under the rug in these episodes this was a catastrophic and when I say catastrophic I mean devastating failure and um, we were knocked out in the third round so the first round we enter by Preston North End at the Amex by four goals to one. I was going back from the rounds thinking, where do we get to? Semi-finals, quarter-final, round of 16, like the board said. No, third round, knocked out by the championship side, 4-1. I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but uh, yeah, it was a very, very poor failure in uh, in the cup. It was devastating. It was catastrophic, and uh, that was quite embarrassing. I don't exactly know what happened there, but um, let's just say we had uh, an injury crisis or something because I don't know how on earth that happened. But um, regardless, it was still a you know decent season in the Premier League. The board saying finishing mid table, we did that with our 11th place finish. And again, in the first season, really, I would be targeting around 8th to 11th, I would say, really. That's where you should be finishing with Brighton. Certainly no lower than 12th or 13th. This is more than a good enough team to finish in mid-table and push towards the top half. You really shouldn't have any sort of problem in the first season in terms of relegation scraps. Your team is far too good to be pulled into a dogfight come the end of the campaign. And again, with the improvements you make to it in the first season as well, Hector Bayerine, Ben Shilwell, uh, Harvey Barnes as well. You know, all three of these players here, I was starting off uh, low 80s or will become low 80s in the first season. And of course, Reese James, a really great young talent, quite versatile and one to watch for the future as well. Grows to a high rate in the mind when Toy starts off with you. It's, you know, it's it's more than good, good enough to finish your mid-table. And whilst in the first season, I wouldn't target a Europa League place. That's probably out of your reach in the first season due to how many quality teams there are in the Premier League. You definitely can finish again around 8th to 11th place which in the first season is more than good enough for Brian. it'll keep the board happy and perhaps if you have a cup run as well you could qualify for the Europa League that way even though we obviously didn't in this one but it's a really fun team Brian. definitely worth giving them a go it's uh, of course a real stadium they've got some really nice kits I love the away and alternate kits this season and uh, again a rivalry with Crystal Palace as well a fun team some good young talent in the likes of Ben White and Aaron Connolly and Jason Malombi as well certainly worth giving them a go and a really fun team to use in the first season pretty low objectives good young talent and quite a bit of money to work with as well but that was this episode of the design for guys so big thank you for watching if you have enjoyed it and if you did enjoy today's episode then please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and i'll see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon